welcome back to another week of Online Kids Church. This week we're learning all about the Holy Spirit. And so I thought I would ask some friends, what do you think of when you think about the Holy Spirit? Let's take a look at their answers. When I think of the Holy Spirit, I think of a counsellor and a guider. When I think of the Holy Spirit, I think of love. When I think of the Holy Spirit, I think of Jesus dying on the cross for us and and saving us and going to heaven so that the Holy Spirit can live inside of us. When I think of the Holy Spirit, I think that He's my helper. When I think of the Holy Spirit, I think of a friend, a supporter, an encourager, and a guide. He's everything, all the good things I can think of. When I think of the Holy Spirit, I think of a friend and somebody who can guide me and tell me to talk to Jesus and comfort me. When I think of the Holy Spirit, it's a, a guide and a comfort to me. That was such incredible answers, guys. But I had this thought. What if we go back to the beginning? Back to the very first time the disciples ever found out about the Holy Spirit and experienced Him. Let's find out what happened. Hello. So I've been asked to share what it was like the day the Holy Spirit came. I remember being in the upper room. It was just after Jesus had ascended to heaven. We all went to the upper room. Thomas, Peter, Andrew, John were there. Lots of women and children. And we were waiting because Jesus had said he would send the Holy Spirit, the helper to us. We prayed and we waited and we prayed and we waited. And then all of a sudden a violent wind came into the room and it swirled around, but we weren't fearful. The next thing, what looked like tons of fire landed, came through and they split up and landed and touched each of us. Again, we weren't fearful because we knew that it was just the Holy Spirit as God had promised. Once, the ho- once those fire flames had touched us, we started talking in different languages, like we were fluent and had heard them many times before. It was an incredible moment being filled with the Holy Spirit, and we knew in our hearts that God was preparing us for something much bigger than anything else we had even thought about. That story comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2 in the Bible. Um, I just want to clarify for you, the wind, although the Bible says it was a violent wind, it was a loud noise so that the people could be expectant that God was coming, the Holy Spirit was coming. The fire wasn't really fire, it just looked like tons of fire, that's how they explain it. And when it touched the people on their heads, it didn't burn them and it wasn't dangerous. But when it did touch them and then they started talking in all those different languages, That was part of the Holy Spirit equipping us so that we could do what Jesus had commanded us to do, to go and tell all the world about him and the gospel of of the gospel and the good news. The most important part of that story is the fact that Jesus kept his promise. He promised just before he went to heaven that he would send us a helper to be with him when he ascended into heaven. And he did exactly that. So even better is that if you and I accept Jesus into our hearts, the Holy Spirit is part of that. He comes and he lives in our hearts and he will be with us forever. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And he will be our guide and our comfort. God started that relationship when he formed us and put us together in our mom's wombs. He started the process. He then gave us the word, the Bible, that helps us and equips us and teaches us all the time. And then he sent his son Jesus to die for us so that we can be assured that we will live forever with Jesus in heaven. And just as he promised, he sent the Holy Spirit to help us and to comfort us, to love us, and all those things and so many more that we can move and do what he has called us to do. So think about asking Jesus into your heart and then you'll know that you have the Holy Spirit with you always. Isn't it so amazing to know that God does so much just to be in a relationship with us? 
here are three ways that we can build a relationship with him. The first one is reading the Bible. The Bible is not just a book that's lying under your bed or in your cupboard. It's a letter, a letter from God. And when you read the Bible, you can learn more about God. The second point is that you need to pray. Praying is not all hands together and focused. It's like having a conversation. You don't have to have your hands together and focused, but you need to have this conversation like you would have with your mom, dad, brother or sister. But instead of to them, it's to God. But sometimes we need to just settle down, listen and hear God. The third thing is going to church. Being in God's family is meaning that we go to church and we spend time with each other just so we can encourage each other and help each other and share God's goodness and we can celebrate what God does for us. Hey guys, have you ever felt scared like everything around you is crazy, like the world has gone mad? Do you ever feel alone? Well, you see, bad things do happen in life and we feel like we've been knocked down. And when that happens, we feel like we've been, we crumble. But don't worry, because in the Bible, Jesus gave us a promise. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus said that he will give us the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will be with us always. Not some of the time, not when he feels like it, but always. And when the Holy Spirit is living inside of us and we've accepted what Jesus has done for us, we become stronger. Bad things still happen in life, but and when we get knocked down, we don't break apart. And that is why our memory verse for today is, you can be sure that I will be with you always. Matthew 28, 20.